Welcome in to Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis, and as the entire political firmament comes undone today, I am going to go all in on the Mueller report and tell you what you actually need to know. Got a bunch of people texting me, a bunch of people tweeting me. Can you just break this down without it being utterly overwhelming, confusing? Um, and yes is the answer. And there's so much noise and there have been so many millions of words written that I feel like a lot of people out there just want the essence of what is going on. Um, I feel a little bit like uh, I'm going over to London in a couple of weeks and I've been reading about Brexit for years now it feels like and nothing really happens. And I feel like this is sort of our version of Brexit because all of the news and all of the noise has kind of conspired to the point where we mostly talk about the noise as opposed to the essence of what exactly was going on. So I'm going to break this down for you. It's not very hard to follow but there are so many people with so many different agendas involved that it becomes complicated. All right. So I will answer questions at the end. I'm not going to look at any of your comments between now and then. You can comment whatever you want but I'm going to focus on trying to distill this for everybody who's listening or viewing and then at the end I will say okay what questions do you have and I will do my best to answer it. Okay let's start here. I tried to create a flow chart for you of how we got to this place. Right? So hopefully you can read my writing. So I have got a good flow chart here that I want you to follow. We're going to start up here at the top where I say Trump wins in 2016. Alright? This is and by the way I'm going to block people who go if I happen to look over and you are arguing about what the Mueller report says or aggressively posting and I happen to look over and see you going over and over and over again I will block you because I have no interest in that right now. Okay? So here is the breakdown. All right, Trump gets elected in 2016. What happens when Trump gets elected in 2016 is Democrats are stunned beyond belief and they suddenly have to figure out a rationale for how did Donald Trump get elected president in 2016 and that's where all of this starts. Okay? And there were a bunch of different narratives that were trotted out about how Donald Trump got elected. The reality is this one that I have written all the way over here. Why did Trump get elected? The reality is Donald Trump got elected because 80,000 people that's all it took in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin trusted Donald Trump to run the country more than they trusted Hillary Clinton. All of this focus if the Democrats really wanted to know what happened should be on the Midwest. All right, You should say how in the world did we not only not make Ohio a battleground but we lost Pennsylvania, we lost Michigan and we lost Wisconsin. That is why Donald Trump got elected. Okay, Those 80,000 votes that he won those states by roughly one Big Ten football stadium those voters were persuaded to vote for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. Okay, That's where we start. Democrats then came up with all these other different rationales. Sexism. Hillary Clinton herself said oh they were never going to let me be elected president. Everybody out there is voting is sexist. Then we had racism. Donald Trump won because he motivated racist voters. I, and the sexism allegation is hard to prove one way or the other. The racism argument is 100 billion percent not true because the only real way that race impacted 2016 is if Hillary Clinton had gotten the black voters in Pennsylvania, in Michigan and in Wisconsin that Barack Obama did she would have been elected president of the United States. So there were contrary to white racists changing their minds there were a lot of black voters who were willing to show up and vote for Barack Obama in 2012 that were not willing to show up and vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016. If she would have gotten the same black voter support that Barack Obama did then she would be president of the United States. Why did those black voters not show up if you want to go down the racism chart? One, ar one argument is because they were sexist. Another argument is because they are racist and they were willing to support a black candidate but they were not willing to support a white candidate. Another argument is some of them switched over to Donald Trump. Another argument is they weren't persuaded by Hillary Clinton's candidacy or Donald Trump's candidacy and they decided not to vote. 
But the argument that racists got Donald Trump elected is flat out wrong. Are there racist people who voted for Donald Trump? Certainly. Just like there were racist people who voted for Barack Obama. But the evidence suggests that Donald Trump flipped hundreds of thousands and millions of Barack Obama voters. Presumably, in 2012, if you voted for Barack Obama, you didn't suddenly become racist in 2016. Moreover, examining the racism argument more closely actually makes it appear that there were people who voted for Barack Obama because he was black that were not willing to vote for Hillary Clinton because she was white, because she was a woman for a variety of reasons, okay? So, the Democrats really don't want to go down the racist uh, trap. So they immediately toss aside sexism because it can't really be proven. Racism because it actually raises all sorts of uncomfortable questions for the Democrats, particularly in the Midwest, about why black voter turnout did not show up to support Hillary when they did show up to support uh, uh, Barack Obama, okay? So then they decide, oh, it was Russia. Instead of just saying, you know what, we ran a candidate who got, got us beat in the Midwest and we lost Pennsylvania and we lost Michigan and we lost Wisconsin, which is the reason why Donald Trump won, they decided, well, it was Russia. Russia got involved in this election. Now, and so this is all spiraling. Everything spirals out of the narrative of Russia got Donald Trump elected. Now, it's important to note this about the Russia theory to begin with. There has never been any suggestion that Russia actually hacked the investigation. That is, other than Donald Trump's suggestion that there were illegal people voting, there has never been any suggestion at all that Russia actually hacked our election or changed the outcome of votes. The only thing you could say was that Russia tried to influence the election by taking advantage of our tribalism on social media and by buying a small amount of ads on Facebook and on other social engines. In fact, if you talk to anyone who has ever bought advertising, the amount of money spent by Russia is a pinprick of what total advertising dollars were spent in this election. Coke, Pepsi, Disney, every major American brand you can think of spends way more money every month than Russia spent in the entirety of the election. Okay? And so what happens is they hit this button hard enough and long enough and Trump, to be fair, is not the best advocate for his position that there is an independent counsel who is appointed in the wake of Comey's firing, everything else, and this investigation begins with the Mueller report. Robert Mueller is brought in to conduct this two-year investigation. The investigation, ultimately, which was released publicly today, is divided in two parts. Part A is an examination of whether or not the Trump campaign coordinated, conspired, or colluded, as Donald Trump has said many times, with, with everybody uh, in Russia, right? That is part one of the two-part uh, report that was released today. Part two is about whether Trump obstructed justice in the investigation that Robert Mueller was undertaking, okay? There is a dispute about part two. Part one is relatively indisputable. In part one, Mueller conducts his investigation. Part one, is there collusion? Is there coordination? Is there in any way a, uh, a situation at play here where the uh, Trump or his campaign or anybody else colluded, conspired, or coordinated with Russia? The answer is no. Okay, so there is no crime. After two years, Robert Mueller, the fevered dreams is that Robert Mueller is going to indict the president, the president's going to get impeached, all these crazy theories and thoughts are going to come. After all of this investigation, there is absolutely no credible evidence that Mueller was able to obtain that collusion, coordination, or a conspiracy was underway for Russia and Trump to allow Trump to win. Okay? Zero evidence of that uh, being able to have happened according to Robert Mueller. That's the first half of the report. There are many parts of that report that are redacted. That's perfectly normal. Several things that you should know about the release of the report. Uh, that everyone cooperated in this. Well, let me go ahead and talk about part two of the report. Let me talk about part two of the report first. Over here we have was there obstruction or not? 
Mueller declines to give a verdict of whether or not there was obstruction of justice by the president. And so on the flip side, uh, the uh, Attorney General Barr says he's examined the evidence along with the other members of Department of Justice high ranking and they have determined that the president did not obstruct justice. Here is where there will likely be a battle although I think it's a losing battle for Democrats. They will argue that the evidence presented by Robert Mueller is obstruction of justice. Republicans will argue it is not. Republicans are in office. This is a non-starter for Donald Trump to be impeached. I think it's highly unlikely that anything comes out of this impeachment. I think it would be the best thing that could happen for Donald Trump if it did. But there's a distinction between impeachment and removal from office. In order to be removed from office, 67 senators have to agree with the impeachment articles. That's not going to happen. There are 53 Republicans in the Senate right now. If they do impeach him, it's not really that big of a deal. Honestly. It actually helps Donald Trump, I think, in 2020 in the same way that being impeached helped Bill Clinton because it sends the message that the people that you're dealing with are so drastically committed to overreaching and believing the worst about you that they aren't able to look or willing to look at actual evidence. All right, let's go to Attorney General Barr. So that's the conclusion in general. I'm going to work through where I just took you. Trump wins in 2016. There have to be theories on how Trump wins. The reason why Trump wins is pretty straightforward. 80,000 voters that he won by total in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and uh, Wisconsin flipped and went to Trump and that's why he got elected president. But then the Democrats tried out racism, they tried out sexism, and they eventually settle on Russia as the reason why Donald Trump got elected. He's this Manchurian candidate, there's no truth to him, and all of this allegedly ends up happening. Okay? So, the Russia report comes down, the Mueller investigation occurs, no collusion, and no verdict of obstruction at all from Mueller, and the Attorney General Barr reviews the evidence and says, we weren't able to believe that there's obstruction here. He lays out his rationale in the memorandum that he reported uh, a month ago or whatever it was, okay? Now, Democrats, I'm sure, I haven't even looked, but I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, the head of the Senate and the head of the House, will come out and say, oh, we actually believe there was obstruction and there'll be a lot of noise and everything will go on for the next couple of days and then this thing will eventually die down and diminish to nothing, okay? So, let me dive into Robert Barr. A lot of questions about Robert Barr's press conference this morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. I watched it. I also watched the coverage of it, particularly on CNN. And here's the big problem that you run into on stories like these. This is where the media, not typically being that smart, gets exposed as being the media. Right? I am a lawyer who talks about sports for a living and politics and business and everything else. One reason why I've been able to be so successful is because I'm smarter than most of the people who do what I do. Because if you're really, really smart, you probably don't decide to be in media. You probably decide to be involved in politics. You probably decide to be involved in business. You decide to stay a lawyer. You decide to be a titan of industry. You aren't in the media, all right? Barr laid out very succinctly exactly what was in this report in four pages that he released before and in his press availability this morning. He said, no collusion, no coordination, no conspiracy in all of the criminal investigations. And then he said, upon taking into account the president's state of mind and everything else surrounding it when it came to obstruction of justice, we didn't believe we could find uh, charges that could be prosecuted even if it weren't the president. Even if this were not the president, this would not be a case where you bring obstruction of justice charges. Why not? First of all, and I tweeted it this morning and I think this is a big deal, any prosecutor worth his salt will tell you that getting a conviction of obstruction of justice when there is no crime that occurred that was trying to be obstructed is very, very difficult. In other words, it is possible to get charges brought for obstruction of justice when there is no underlying crime as was discovered here. It is very difficult to get a conviction in a case like that because the defense attorney sits back and says, wait a minute, my client was obstructing justice, yet you yourself found that there was no crime that occurred. If there's no collusion, there's no coordination, and there's no conspiracy, how are you going to be able to hang the hat of obstruction of justice on my client? Now, 
you can be charged with resisting arrest without actually doing anything that justifies you being arrest, arrested. But do you know what almost always happens in those cases? The charges get dismissed because the jury will say, wait a minute, my client didn't do anything wrong but you tried to arrest him and he didn't want to be arrested and now you're just charging him with a crime of resisting arrest when you improperly tried to arrest him in the first, first place? When you read these reports, what you find is that Donald Trump is not trusting of the apparatus that surrounds him. He doesn't believe in Mueller. He doesn't believe in his attorney general. He doesn't believe in the people that represent him in general. Okay? So, he was skeptical from the get-go. What is remarkable about the Mueller report, and I'm surprised I haven't seen more people talking about this, is how many people did talk. This is significant. I've seen a lot of articles talking about how, oh, Donald Trump's lawyers got to review the Mueller report before it was public. But you know what Donald Trump's lawyers didn't do? They didn't, ex uh, they didn't assert privilege in any of these matters. I want you to think about this for a minute. You are reading basically as if you were a fly on the wall in the Oval Office. Donald Trump reacting to all sorts of major events in his presidency. His own counsel talked to Robert Mueller. His own former FBI director, current FBI director, national security advisor. The reason why Donald Trump didn't need to sit for an interview was because all of them talked. And amazingly, Trump's people never asserted executive privilege. I will just tell you this from the get-go. If I were in the White House and I were having a conversation with my attorneys in the White House, I am 1 billion percent asserting executive privilege. I do not want my attorneys in the White House talking about our private conversations or remarking about how I react to news, for instance, that Robert Mueller is being appointed and that there will be an independent counsel to investigate everything in my presidency. There are lots of things you can criticize Donald Trump for. This is one of the most transparent, cooperative situations I have ever seen. They take you into the room as if that were not wild enough. As if that were not wild enough. Here's something else that's crazy. The amount of detail that is in this report that has already been reported is amazing. That's why this thing is going to land without that much force because there were so many leaks already in the Donald Trump White House that most of these details were already out there publicly. The 10 different situations that Robert Mueller investigated have all been written about by the Washington Post, by the New York Times, by the Wall Street Journal, by all of the biggest journalistic organizations in the country. They got a lot wrong about the Mueller report but a much of the essence that is in here was already out there. And so as much as Donald Trump hates the news media, they actually are a great weapon for him here because these punches are landing flat and soft because the evidence was already out there and had already been discussed and broken down for a long time in advance. I watched CNN's immediate coverage after the uh, attorney bar Attorney General Barr statement and it was so bad that I turned off the television and I couldn't watch anything else. In particular, Jake Tapper came on and he said six or seven different times uh, Attorney General Barr said that there was no collusion and that there was no conspiracy and that there was no coordination. And he was like, this just seemed like, a, uh, like an opportunity for the president to have a lawyer defending him. Why did he keep repeating that there was six or seven different times? And I, I literally leaned over and put my head in my hands and I'm like, this dude is not smart enough to understand what he just watched. Barr walked through each of the elements that Mueller investigated and explained that in each of those situations, whether it was social media activism, whether it was meetings, in, uh, the, 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 uh, meetings with advisors, everybody else... All of those situations were investigated and no collusion, no coordination, no conspiracy was found. He was going through all of the findings of Robert Mueller. He wasn't repeating the same finding over and over again. He was reporting each of the threads that Mueller had examined. 
And then he got criticized because he said, well, the president's state of mind factors in here. That's a huge part of the second part of this investigation into obstruction of justice. What was the president thinking? Why was he doing what he did? That's integral to determining whether or not there is any basis for an obstruction of justice charge. So the president's state of mind is integral at its most basic level when you consider his response. And Barr's perspective, which I think is correct, is that Trump was so angry at the mechanisms of government surrounding him that he decided to, he believed that people were allied against him. If you want to criticize Donald Trump for anything, it's for going after Robert Mueller as much as he did. Because Mueller, for the most part, vindicates Trump and says he and his campaign did nothing wrong. And again, the great flaw here from the get-go, I think from a Democratic perspective, is instead of accepting that they lost in 2016 because of those 80,000 voters who changed their mind in the Midwest, they've been convinced that there had to be some grand conspiracy. That Trump had to be this Manchurian candidate. There had to be some huge element of evildom associated with Donald Trump in order for him to triumph in 2016. The reality was Hillary Clinton wasn't a very good candidate. She didn't campaign very hard in the Midwest. Her advisors did not tell her she was in danger in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And they were stunned that Trump was able to pull off the electoral victory. Trump pulled off a miraculous win by 80,000 votes out of, you know, what, 120 million people who voted or whatever else? It's a tiny pinprick. But Hillary Clinton's people didn't recognize that she was in danger in the Midwest. They were still campaigning in states where she had no chance when they should have been focused on where she was likely to lose. And so, ultimately, when you break this down, I think that this is an extraordinary window into Donald Trump's mindset that provides evidence that there is absolutely nothing to the Russia collusion campaign in context with the Trump administration and the Trump campaign. Here is the final irony. Russia's intent was to sow discord in this country by manipulating Americans' feelings and emotions through social media. They have been wildly successful in doing so because they have turned the media into an arm of the Politburo. Russia could have never had the influence it had on Facebook and on Twitter if the media had not gone through and actually reported all of the news that they provided them. If anybody colluded with Russia, it was all of the reporters who were getting tipped off about Hillary Clinton's emails and the articles that they wrote as a result of those emails. The DNC email hacking was not a high-level KGB genius plot. They emailed and said that they needed new passwords and the Democratic operative was too dumb to realize it was a phishing expedition and he sent them his email and then they flipped his email and got access to all the emails inside of the DNC. And then Russia didn't distribute those emails and turn it into a major story about Russia collusion. The media did. The irony here that most are not recognizing is that no one colluded more with Russia than the American media and no one did more to influence the impact of Russia on the election and as a result in our country than the media has. Russia did a tiny pinprick and allowed the media to run wild with this and as a result, they have fundamentally weakened America far more than they ever could have if their own collusion campaign had been allowed to run its course without anybody noticing. Now, I do think there are many lessons that come out of this. I do think there are many lessons that come out of this. One of them is we need more intelligent media members, right? Let's just start there. Another one is we all have to be more discerning in what we believe on social media. These tech companies are being played. They are playing us through algorithms to get us to spend more time and to polarize more people that middle is not holding to steal a line from Abraham Lincoln a house divided against itself cannot stand. You have two polar opposites which both flourish I believe online and it pushes people towards extremism. Now the media is guilty here because only 22% 
of the American public is even on Twitter. So a disinformation campaign on Twitter only hits 22% of the American public. Even on Facebook, it didn't actually influence that many people. The media is far more influential covering Russian collusion than Russian collusion ever would have been in fixing our elections. Remember, we're alleging that Russia waged a campaign to impact the hearts and minds of voters. Not that they changed votes themselves. If Americans are too dumb to recognize when they are being misguided by foreign companies, do you blame foreign actors for taking advantage of our stupidity? I don't. I think we would do similar things with our CIA and with our NSA and with all of our FBI and everybody else. Do you think the American government is not undertaking similar campaigns of disinformation? The media needs to be better at their job. And, frankly, we need to stop electing presidents based on trivialities. We spent a ton of time talking about whether Joe Biden smelled a woman's hair. Very little time talking about more substantive issues in the world of American commerce. We get distracted by the bright shiny object and miss the whole which is how you end up with this delusion, right? The Russia delusion. I mean, it really is a Russia delusion. The Democrats had an opportunity after 2016 to sit back and say, you know what? We got our ass kicked in Michigan. We got our ass kicked in Pennsylvania. We got our ass kicked in Wisconsin. Let's figure out how to remedy that so it doesn't happen again in 2020. Instead, they fixated on the reason that Donald Trump got elected as being Russia, and they tried to use Robert Mueller as an agent to overturn the 2016 election even though to his credit Mueller recognized that frankly the Trump campaign was too incompetent to actually collude with Russia. I mean if anything when you read the Mueller report what I read is my God I can't believe Donald Trump had his personal attorneys talking to Robert Mueller that that all these guys Donald McGahn went under oath and said all these different things about private conversations with Donald Trump and he never asserted executive privilege. It's mind-boggling, if anything. That's the most surprising thing to me that comes out of this report. Also, that Trump's own conspiracy-laden mindset created the impression, even if he wasn't doing it, that he had done something wrong. He behaved in such a way because he believed that people were going to come after him and maybe weren't going to treat him fairly that he created that idea that there was something else going on here. All right, uh, questions. What questions do you guys have about the Mueller report? Smart ones. Things that I might not have addressed. Again, my name is Clay Travis. This is Outkick the Show. Uh, any Anything smart here. Thank you for the feedback on my whiteboard. I tried it. Sometimes it's easier if you're just getting here. Sometimes it's easier to follow how we end up all the way down here arguing over obstruction of justice out of the election in 2016. And I think a lot of people um, have no clue what they're actually able to, uh, to see. Right? Um, and uh, I can see a lot of people responding to one person, so I'm going to block that person. Um, When will we get the full unredacted report? Never. You're never going to get the full unredacted report because there's a lot of information in there that came out of a grand jury proceeding. Attorney General Barr ran through and labeled four different situations that he was not going to, uh, not going to allow everything to be out there. Um, The fact of the matter is there's almost no redactions when it comes to the obstruction of justice charge which is the only one where there is any at all, I believe, dispute to be found. Democrats, like I said, I don't even know if they've said it yet but they will. Pelosi and Schumer will say, oh, there's definite evidence here of obstruction of justice. And Attorney Barr, Attorney General Barr is trying to cover up and and protect uh, Donald Trump when this was not a vindication of him. That's the argument they will make. The reality is, I think most reasonable lawyers who look at all this evidence will say this is not a case where you could get a conviction for obstruction of justice, whether it was the president or not. And it's a matter of unsettled constitutional law whether a sitting president can even be uh, indicted. Or whether, as as they discuss in the report, whether he could actually be uh, uh, subpoenaed and forced to testify. But the reality is, if you read the obstruction side, you didn't need to talk to the president. Everybody who talked to the president talked So everything surrounding the president was already public which is the stunning part to me that the president never actually asserted any executive privilege of many of these conversations which took place 
and were private which again I think goes to the president's underlying mental state he really doesn't believe they did anything wrong he doesn't believe there was conspiracy collusion or coordination and there's no evidence to support that it actually is there. Um, and by the way if there is an indictment it goes to the courts for years probably before we actually get a resolution. If Democrats are smart they will put aside the Mueller report they will stop believing in unicorns they will stop believing that somebody is magically going to come in and reverse the 2016 election and they will start focusing on how to win 2020 and the first way you win in 2020 is by winning back Wisconsin by winning back Michigan and by winning back Pennsylvania. That's what they should focus on. What they're probably more likely to focus on is trying to impeach Donald Trump or continuing to have congressional hearings and arguing that there's all sorts of obstruction that went on. It's already April. All right? It's April of 2019. Voters start to select a Democratic nominee to run against Donald Trump by January of 2020. Like eight months from now. The election is just a little over a year away. Trump is going to finish his whole term out unless something awful happens. He has a health scare. Somebody shoots him. Something happens which doesn't allow him to finish his term. So stop believing in the Easter Bunny. Stop believing that magically you're going to get Santa Claus coming down the chimney with indictment papers. It ain't going to happen. Donald Trump was vindicated by these reports and ironically enough he was actually helped by the fact that the media had already written about most of the things in uh, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post already. Um, all right. I love all of you guys. This is probably the best 30 minute breakdown you're going to find anywhere of the Mueller report. How we got here. What we actually learned. I think it's thoroughly unbiased. Right down the middle. Straight news. I try to be as honest with you guys as I possibly can because I find there to be so much stupidity in the media that sometimes it drives me crazy and so I try to just bring you the essence of what's actually there. Appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis. DBAP invests you need to SBAP. I will see you guys tomorrow and I'll also see you with some gambling picks. By the way, didn't even mention this. 3-0 and last night in the NBA playoffs. Big wins. One of my biggest winning days ever. I uh, got some good picks for you. I'm big on the Warriors tonight against the Clippers. Kisses. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. See y'all. Thank you. Love you Facebook.